Artificial intelligence is everywhere these days, but what does that mean to us as Java and or Spring developers? For the longest time, if you wanted to work with machine learning, you'd have to use a language like Python. This is because Python had a rich set of tools and libraries for working with the problems in this space. Now that we have LLMs like OpenAI's GPT-4, where the P stands for pre-trained, we can simply call this like we would any other REST API. Java is everywhere in the enterprise, and we need to start thinking about how we can build these capabilities into our applications. In today's tutorial, I wanna to talk to you about communicating with an LLM like OpenAI's GPT-4, or any other LLM for that matter, and some of the challenges that you might come across. From there, I'll introduce you to Spring AI, which is going to help us build these AI-powered applications and solve some of these challenges along the way. All right, so I'm over here at OpenAI. Again, we're gonna be working with GPT-4 today, but this will work with a lot of the LLMs out there. So you first need to sign up for an account to work with this, so go ahead and sign up for an account. I'm gonna go ahead and log in. And again, we're working with the API. Now you may know this because of ChatGPT. So there is ChatGPT, which is a user interface in front of OpenAI's uh, LLMs like GPT-4, or you can just call the LLM directly. So the first thing that we're gonna need is an API key. You're gonna wanna go ahead and start up, start up, sign up for a new one. And I'm just gonna say that this is a YouTube tutorial API key. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this after this presentation, so uh, don't try and use this one. So once I have that, I'll go ahead and copy that. We're gonna use that in a second. Now, that I just wanna mention that this does cost money. This isn't free. But for personal use, for just trying this out and using this on your local machine, I put in $10 and I have never, I'm not gonna come close to using that in this context. This is something you need to think about if this is an application that you are going to take to production and other people are using it. Now, if you wanna learn a little bit more about pricing, you can go to openai.com slash pricing. You can dig into this. It says multiple models, each with different capabilities and price points. Prices can be viewed in units of either 1 million or 1,000 tokens. You can think of tokens as pieces of words where 1,000 tokens is about 750 words. This paragraph alone is 35 tokens. So tokens are the currency of LLMs. So you wanna dig into this and look at like what it costs. Um, so for something like GPT-4, uh, where we're just doing some kind of chat completions, you can see that the input is $30 for 1 million tokens, $60 for 1 million tokens on the output side. The input side is what we are feeding it, uh, the instructions that we're giving to the AI, and the output is what we are receiving back. So you can dig through this pricing. There's also this really cool page where um, on OpenAI's site where you can kind of learn more about the tokenizer, because again, it's not just uh, about words. Uh, tokens are the kind of currency and they, they split it up differently. So um, let's see, we have show an example. So we can use this as an example and you see that this paragraph has 50 seconds, 57 tokens and you can see how it splits these tokens up. And so you can see like indivisible is not just a token. There's actually two tokens there and then the period is another token. So this is how you can learn about the pricing, but again, if we're just doing this on our local machine, uh, you should be able to put in a few dollars and really kind of play around with that. So we've copied our API key, uh, and now what I wanna do is just do a little test without Java, without Spring, uh, just so we can see what's going on here. So I'm gonna jump into IntelliJ. I have a quick little script. So again, this is just a REST API call. So we can do this from Bash, we can do it from Java, we can do it from Spring without the help of any other library, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and paste in that API key that I just copied. We are curling an endpoint here, which is uh, slash chat slash completions. So we're working with the chat model where we wanna ask it a question and get a response back. And then we're passing in the uh, content type, the authorization, which is a bear token with that API key and then a few parameters. So all of this, where I pulled this from, is the OpenAI's documentation. Uh, like any other REST API documentation that you would come across, it tells you how to work with it. So I'm saying what the model is, and if I wanted to use like GPT-4 in this case, I'll go ahead and use GPT-4. And then the message is, in this case, the role, there's different roles that you can use, uh, system, user, 
Um, but in this case, we're just going to use our user role, which is like the question that I want to ask. And then the content is the prompt. So here's the prompt. Tell me a dad joke about computers. So at this point, I should be able to go ahead and run this. It will talk to OpenAI. So it says call an open API, and then it returns back this response. The content is what we care about, and the joke is, why don't computers take their hats off? Because they have bad caps lock. Pretty good, right? So now here's the challenges, right? Like we just did this from Bash, so why do I need anything on top of that? Well, first off, you see what we got back is this uh, kind of big selection of JSON with a whole bunch of things that we may not care about. Uh, so what comes back is a content is a string. So the response is a Java string. Most of the time, we need to like take that and parse that and put that into an object that we can work with. This is a very simple example, but think of examples where give me uh, 10 titles for a YouTube uh, presentation that I want to create. Uh, we don't want a list of strings back. We want to turn that into a Java object. So parsing the, the response and actually getting JSON back in the response is another uh, challenge that we'll face. So there's some challenges there. There's also some challenges when we want to introduce our own data. Uh, so we want to kind of uh, augment the context that we're sending. Uh, this can be done by stuffing the prompt or something called rag, which gets into, all right, how do we uh, split our PDFs? Uh, how do we use embeddings? How do we use uh, vector databases? These are all challenges that we'll start to figure out we need to solve for when we start building real world applications. So with that, I want to jump over to the Spring.io website and take a look at Spring AI and how it might help us with some of these challenges. All right, so here I am at Spring.io. If you want to learn a little bit more about Spring AI, you can go to the project page, come down to Spring AI. You get a nice little overview here. Um, so really, Spring AI is an application framework for AI, for AI engineering. Uh, its goal is to apply the AI domain spring ecosystem design principles such as portability and modular design and promote using POJOs as the building blocks of an application to the AI domain. So right off the bat, you can see that really this is an abstraction on top of building AI applications that talk to the different chat models out there. So we're working with OpenAI today, but there's others like Azure, Amazon Bedrock, Google Gemini, et cetera. So um, these are chat models. There's other things for like building text to image or transcription or working with these embeddings and vector databases. Uh, so there's a lot that this gives you out of the box. So if you want to learn more, you can click into the documentation. The reference docs are really good. But we're just going to start by building a simple project here today to give you an idea of the things that you can do. So I'm going to head over to start.spring.io, and we're going to create a new project using Java, using Maven, using the latest version of Spring Boot. And I'm going to go ahead and fill in some data here. So let's just say this is dev.danvega. We'll call this dad jokes. And we are going to use Java 21. I'm going to pick some dependencies. I'm going to build a web app. And then here is where you get to go ahead and add your Spring AI support. Now, in the past, before version 0.8.1, I think it was, you had to go in and kind of manually add these bits. But all of the Spring Boot starters and the auto configuration are now here so that we can just choose it from start.spring.io. So I'm not going to choose Spring AI. I'm going to pick the model that I'm working with. In this case, I'm going to say Open AI. And that's all I need. Those are the bits that I need to create this application. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and generate this, download the zip, and I'm going to open up this application in my favorite IDE, which is IntelliJ Ultimate Edition. But feel free to use whatever text editor or IDE you're most productive in. With that, Let's write some code. All right, so I have the application opened in IntelliJ. The first thing I want to do is go into source main resources and application.properties, and we're going to add a couple of things here. So the first is spring.ai, because again, we're working with OpenAI. We're going to enter in an API key. Now, we could just copy this as a string into our uh, properties here. But again, we don't want to commit this to something like GitHub. So let's go ahead and set up an environment variable for this. 
To do this, I'm going to go ahead and let's just run this application once. And then I can come in here and say, edit my configuration. And I want to go ahead and modify this and add an environment variable. So you can see that um, we can just say var equals value. In this case, I'm going to say that my open AI API key is equal to that. So I'm going to hit apply and OK. And now instead of using that string in here, I can just say open AI API key. And that will give us what we need. So something has happened so far and not allowing us to run our application. Um, that's OK, because we probably haven't configured this stuff yet. So the other thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and set something else, which is the open AI chat model. So chat options model. And this is just whatever model we're using. So OpenAI has different models like GPT-3, GPT-3.5 Turbo, GPT-4. I'm just going to say that we're working with GPT-4 today. So those are the only things I need to set to get going. And I don't even think you need the model. It probably defaults to something. But you'll want to look in the Spring AI documentation for all of the properties that you can set because you can set things like how, cl how clever or how creative do you want this to get. So there's like a temperature setting. Uh, do you want to max input and output as far as tokens go? That will really matter when we start to put this into production. But for now, just getting started with that, this is enough. So let's see if we can go ahead and run this application with those things set. And yes, so now we're able to do that. So the reason it wouldn't start before is it said, hey, you're, you're going to talk to OpenAI's GPT something, right? But you didn't set any of those variables that we need you to set. So you at least need this API key to get started. All right, so let's build out just a very simple chat controller. We'll say chat controller. And this is going to be a class. And what we got to do is, in this case, this is going to be a REST controller that we can call. And then this REST controller will, in turn, call OpenAI's GPT-4 with our prompt or our question that we're going to ask. So I'm going to say this is a REST controller. And then I'll just go ahead and create a um, method here. So this is going to be a git mapping being of dad dash jokes. So what we're going to say is this is going to return a string. And we'll call this method generate. And this is going to take in a request param. So we'll say a request param. And the value of this will be message. So we are taking in a message. And let's just have a default value in case we don't ask it anything. And I'll just say, tell me a dad joke, right? So that's all we need. Uh, we can assign this to string message. And now we need to go off and call this thing. So let me just say return null for now. So now I need to get a, uh, access to the chat client. So uh, let's take a look at the chat client, what this is, and how this is going to help us working with these different LLMs. So I'm going to say private final chat client, and we'll call this chat client. And we'll get this through constructor injection. This is something that because we've included the OpenAI bits, and remember we, we chose OpenAI from the dependency dropdown, and it included this Spring AI, OpenAI Spring Boot Starter. So these are the things that are happening behind the scenes. We have some auto configuration, and we have this thing called a chat client. If we look at chat client, chat client is an interface. So public interface chat client extends model client. There's two methods in here. One to call using a string. So take in a string, call something, and then return a string. There's another that will take in something called a prompt and return a chat response. Um, both of them do a lot of the same thing. You'll see that this ends up creating a prompt for us and returning that chat response dot uh, dot content. So the content is, we saw this in the JSON earlier. This is the actual um, answer that we're looking for. So there's a chat client. And if we look at the um, implementations of chat client, there is one here because we have open AI on the class path. So we have public class open, a open AI chat client, which extends a couple of different things. So when we ask for a chat client, there's only one available which is the OpenAI one. So Spring will automatically inject this into our constructor for us using dependency injection. So now that I know that, I know I can use the chat client 
and use the call method. In this case, I'm just going to pass in a string and that string is going to be the message. So all that does, and remember, this chat client uh, call method returns a string. So we don't have to worry about getting access to what we wanna get. In this case, it's just a string. So that is all we need to get started with Spring AI and calling OpenAI. So let's go ahead and run this. Let's see if it starts up, okay? Now remember, this is on slash dad joke. So I'm gonna hop over to a terminal and we're gonna talk to it. Uh, so I'm gonna use HTTP IE, just curl, but a little bit friendlier. So this is on 8080 slash dad dash jokes. And if we go ahead and run that, we should just get a string back. Why don't scientists trust atoms? Because they make up everything. Classic, classic joke. All right, so I know that was a very, very simple example, but as they say, you would need to learn to walk before you can run, right? So we just took a simple example of how we can kind of set everything up, get started with OpenAI, GPT-4 in this case, and create a simple controller that uses the chat client to talk to OpenAI. Now, the nice thing is this chat client, that, that's an interface, right? So if we switch over and we wanna test out Google Gemini, that's gonna work exactly the same, which is a great. This is that abstraction on top of the yellow lamps. Now, there's a lot of things we didn't go into today. I didn't wanna make this video an hour long, but there are things we need to talk about. Like once we get the response back, if we wanna like actually turn that into something, how do we parse that into something that we can work with? What are these things that we are asking to the LLM? These are, these are called prompts. There's a whole science behind prompts and prompt engineering being able to communicate effectively with the LLM. There's a whole way to construct these prompts using things like string templates. There's also ways to work with augmenting the context or stuffing the prompt or being able to provide your own documents, what we call retrieval augmentation generation or RAG for short. So there's a lot more that goes into this, but I didn't want to inundate you in this first video. This was really talking about it at a high level with Java and AI introducing you to Spring AI, uh, but we have a lot more to talk about on this journey. So I'm gonna make some more videos on this. We're gonna talk about all of these things that you're gonna run into. And I'd love to hear from you. What type of applications are you interested in building as far as Spring and AI? What questions do you have? Let me know below. But friends, if you found this interesting, if you found some value in this, do me a big favor, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and as always, happy coding. Yeah.